Today we're going to take a look at the component life cycle. So a component has a life cycle managed by Angular itself. Angular will create the component, render it along with the children. It will check if it's data bound and so forth. So lifecycle hooks gives us visibility into these key moments and the ability to act when they occur. So let's take a look at how we can use these uh, hooks to evolve our ng2 repo app. Before we take a look at the lifecycle hooks, let's just remind ourselves of how we build our ng2 play repo and what we've built so far. So to get running with ng2 play, uh, you come to GitHub and hit my GitHub profile and I have a repo here called ng2play. You just clone the repo and once you've done that, I get some simple instructions down here. Just hit npm install and then type gulp. And we actually have two kind of applications right now. We have the client side application and the server side application. So to have a fully functioning app uh, in this repo, you'll need to run two different command prompts. One command prompt running the front end and one running the Express.js backend. So I always have two, uh, two command prompts running in the background, one running gulp, which uh, looks for file changes on disk and recompiles my TypeScript files and also lints the code. And I have a separate command prompt that runs the backend. And once you have this up and running, let's take a look at the actual app. We have a simple to-do application where you can add items and you can remove them. We are using forms and we are resetting the form and we have a couple, we have some functions here we can hit an about page and we are using the router to pass parameters and we can also sign in using auth0 and once we are signed in we can hit our profile page and fetch a quote of the day uh, a chuck norris quote of the day from our backend so let's take a look now at how we can use these lifecycle hooks to hook into the application. So if we open up our code here, we're going to take a look at three different lifecycle life cycle hooks. We're going to hook in into on init, on destroy, and then after content init. And to hook into these events, uh, we have great support by using TypeScript. So John Popper recently did a Pluralsight course on the first look and he uh, coded in Plunker so we couldn't really see what advantages we could have by using TypeScript together with VS Code. So let's evolve his examples a little bit and see what kind of help we actually get from the IDE. And all lifecycle hook interfaces are available in the Angular 2 core library. So we're already importing stuff from Angular 2 core up here in our to-do TS. Let's also import on init. And now we can come down here to the class definition and tell TypeScript that we want to implement on init. And now if we don't implement on init, we actually get a compile time error here. It says that we need to implement the interface on init. So we need to have a property called ng on init, which is missing on the type. And let's try to satisfy this error by implementing this method, ng on init. It's gonna be a void. And just log to the console that we've hit this method. Let's save this and switch to the browser and hit the to do app. And we can see that we logged ng on init. So the Angular framework calls into these methods and allows us to react to these events. So let's see how we can do something a little bit more useful. If we take a look at our profile page, we are fetching a quote of the day. And I believe that we are doing this in the constructor right now, which isn't that smart when we are trying to write unit tests and stuff like that. So let's, so let's move this out to initialize on, on init instead, which is a great example of how we should use these lifecycle hooks. So let's come to profile, profile.ts, and once again, import on init. 
And let's also import on destroy and after content in it. So there's a bunch of hooks and I won't cover them all, but uh, if you are interested, just go ahead and take a look at the documentation website and you can see that we have all the interfaces defined here and documented. So you just hook into the one that, that will help you satisfy your needs. And now we can tell the profile class to implement on init, on destroy, and after content in it. And now we can see that we have an error that we are missing free properties on the class and not just the ng on init. So let's just add these really quick. And it's really important to get these right. If we misspell something, the Angular framework wouldn't know how to call into this method. But on the other hand, we'd still have a TypeScript compile time error which uh, would notify us about that something isn't right. So ng on destroy, which is a void as well, and ng after content in it. And now the compile time error go goes away. So let's also log here to see in which order these are called. Let's copy paste this line, fix this really quick. All right, so Let's save this up and switch to the browser and take a look at which in which order these are called. So refresh this page. We can see that ng on init was called first and then ng after content in it, which is called after the component content is initialized. And when we leave the page, we want to see that ng on destroy was called and we saw that it was called. So it looks like Angular is able to call into these functions and we can react to these events. So let's just do one more simple thing. Uh, instead of fetching uh, things in the constructor like this, let's do that on ng on init instead. So when we test our code, we won't go out and fetch data from a server by simply instantiating our profile class. So let's save this up and make sure that it still works. Switch back to a browser. We got refreshed because we are using live server. We hit profile and we are still seeing the quote of the day because Angular 2 is calling into these functions. All right, so that was all I had for this screencast. Uh, we didn't go through all the hooks. I'm gonna link to the docs in the description. So if you want to learn more about this, go ahead and check it out. And for more screencasts on the latest technology and other stuff that is related to programming, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Until next time, have a nice day, guys.